So as far as the absolute value function is concerned, now when you talk about the absolute value function, there are two types of um, absolute value transformation that you generally see is that absolute value of f of x um, and f of absolute value of x. So these two are the specific transformations for HL syllabus. Now, when you talk about the, the absolute value of f of x, now what actually you're doing is that in this case, suppose, suppose this is my function. Now here is, let's say this is the original function. Now, when you draw the absolute value of this function, what you actually do is that this part, which is positive, remains positive because if you take the absolute value of, let's say, negative four, it's going to be four. But if you take absolute value of four, it is actually four. So if there is a positive value, that remains as it is. And if there is anything negative, because here you're finding the negative absolute value of negative y, I mean, absolute value of y values. So this y value, which is negative here somewhere, it becomes positive. And this side, it remains as it is. So when you draw the absolute value of f of x, actually you just reflect the part which is, the cut down the part which is below x-axis and reflect whatever this part was here in the x-axis. So that's how you draw the absolute value of f of x graph. Now, when you have to draw the absolute value of, let's say, um, I mean, the f of absolute value of x, actually what you do is just like in this case, for example, if I've got a function like this, um, now, what is actually happening is that you input these x values. Now, for example, that I put negative or positive number, it is all going to come out as positive. So, for example, if I'm finding out f of absolute value of negative one, which means that I'm finding at x equals to minus one, it's actually the same as f of one, because this is going to be positive. So, actually, these negative y values, that's why, that's why these become completely insignificant. So, what we do is we cut down the side of the graph. And then reflect the remaining part of the graph across y axis. So, so this is going to be the, the, the general logic for f of absolute value. So to draw the absolute value, repeating the instructions again, you cut down the graph that has that is towards the negative side of the y axis. So you're going to cut this down and then reflect the remaining part of the graph in the y axis. So here. So this is, this is what you have at this stage. This is the original function and this is the f of absolute. So this is the entire thing which we have got at this stage here is this is the f of absolute value of the function. So, so let's say if you have got a question, uh, first question is that f of x is uh, 2x minus three over x plus four. The, the question is to sketch the graph of this given function. So when you draw this graph, basically the first thing that is you got to draw is the vertical asymptote. So for vertical asymptote, you basically equate denominators to zero. So you get X equals to four. For horizontal asymptote, you, um, because it's a general linear over linear equation. So you take the coefficient of the X term, which is two or one. So that's two, but just generally remember that if you wish to find out the horizontal asymptote, um, there are three rules. One, like I'll just take some different examples compared to this. So first rule is that if you got a x plus b or c x plus d, or you got a x square plus like similar like like degree terms, um, let's say d x square plus e x plus something f, then you just take the coefficient of the leading terms. That is what is your horizontal asymptote. And sometimes it is also advised that you spend some time on like thinking about, let's say if your function is a plus something like b to x plus five, don't say that here, okay, the horizontal asymptote for this part is zero, because if I take an infinite x value, x tends to infinity, this value will become zero, but actually this zero plus a, which means that new horizontal asymptote is actually y equals to a. And uh, if your degree of numerator is smaller than the degree of denominator, like for example, you got like y is a o like three over x plus five, in this case, you remember that x axis is always the horizontal asymptote. So y equals to zero will be always the horizontal asymptote in this case. So coming back to this problem that we have. So number one is that I've got the vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote. Next up is get the roots quickly. So get the roots. So root will be when you put y as zero. So if you put y as zero, you get x is three over two. And then you put, let's say x is zero to get the y intercept, which is three, four. So with the given set of information, so if I draw the graph of it, so if I draw the graph for this one, um, let's say in this case, what we have is, 
we got the vertical asymptote at four, x equals to four. So I'm just gonna draw x equals to four vertical asymptote here. Then I'm gonna draw y equals to two. I'm gonna mark the, uh, let's say, the x and y intercepts. So x is at three over two. Um, this is y equals to two, x is four. This is three over two, so here, and then this is at three, four. This is three fourth actually, and this is three over two, and this is at four. So the graph actually this side is something like here. And and the next is this part, which is here. Because this side of the graph will have another root if I draw like here. So so the first thing that they can ask you is that sketching, and after that they'll ask you to find the domain and range for the function. So domain and range, all those stuff that you can do it. X belongs to real numbers, x should not be four y belongs to real numbers, y should not be two. So this is your domain and range for this specific graph. And I just wanna focus the question around the obsolete value function. So let's say the first question is that hence sketch, hence, hence solve, hence solve, absolute value of two x minus three over x minus four is less than, let's say one. So suppose this is what I have to solve. Now, what do you do is actually when you draw something like the graph for absolute value, you'll get an idea for this. So I, I just actually go ahead and draw the abs, uh, the graph for absolute value function. So this is my original function, positive part. This part gets reflected in X axis. This positive part remains as it is. So the graph that you can see in the red is actually the absolute value of the graph. They want it to be less than one. So what we do is you just draw y equals to one line. So now since it is a non-GDC paper, what we do is we got to find out these intersections. Now, if you look at the general solution for this question actually is, I can show is that this is the general solution here. Now they are asking less than one. So basically for what X values is this inequality below one. And if you look at the part where it is below one is actually happening only from here and here. So this is the part that we have to find out. So this is the intersection that I have to calculate. Now, before you do the intersection, now you got to just write down the equation of the original branches. Now, when you look at this branch, we'll have original equation itself because you didn't change that. And this branch actually is a reflection x-axis. So this branch will have an equation of negative two x minus three or x minus four. So this is the equation of this branch. And then you find out the intersection. So this equate to one, this equate to one. And when I solve for the first one, so two X minus three equals to X minus four. So you get X equals two, basically. This side comes, so you get X is one. So this point actually is at X equals to one. Now the next, next one is to equate, if we do this, so you get two X minus three or X minus four equals to negative one. You solve for x, so two x minus three equals to x minus negative x minus so x plus four. So three x equals to one, sorry, seven. So x is seven over three. So this point actually, which you get is seven over three. And so my correct answer for this inequality actually is x between um, one and seven over three. So that's your first way of doing this question. And I'll, I can show you the other way of doing this as well. So the other way was to do this question was to actually just um, squared both the sides. I'm not gonna show the entire solution. And so you get two X minus three or X minus four, the whole square. So you could just do this, bring one to the left-hand side and then follow the sign diagram procedure to solve this. Uh, remember that rational inequalities cannot be multiplied. That's the reason I didn't multiply. I could, didn't take it here. Otherwise you might get the wrong answer. Now let's take the other type of question that is asked in the similar concept uh, on absolute value. Let's say instead of this question, if the question was to actually, so now assume that if my, my um, general solution I had to find was for this question. So two times absolute value of X minus three or absolute value of X minus four. Um, this has to be less, let's say less than or equals to uh, 1.5. If this was the question, how would we do that? Now, or let's say this was uh, less than uh, 1.8. So, so how do we do this particular question? So in this case, what you do is if you look at the, the simple um, uh, part, which is here is uh, they have given us uh, f of, uh, the f of absolute value of x graph. 
when you try f of absolute value for x graph, what does it mean is that you actually cut down the negative side. So if you cut down the negative side, uh, so here we go. So if I cut down the negative side of the graph, which is this part, so you can see that this part is already gone and then reflect the remaining part in y-axis. So when I reflect this remaining part, this is here, this comes here. So you get another vertical asymptote. So here we go. And then you get the graph here. Now, if I wanted to sketch the graph for this is, this you know is the 0.75. So now this will be, let's say one or two mark question, maximum, not more than that. Now I want to solve for below, where's the graph below 1.8? Now let's say below 1.8, so this is 1.8 line. So actually the graph is below 1.8 in all this region. Okay, so if you look at here, this region is the graph where it is below 1.8. This side is above 1.8, this side above 1.8. So correct answer for this is x between negative two to positive two. So that's what you, that's how you do the absolute value questions.